Good morning, welcome to Bethel Baptist Church. This morning, my name is Pastor Paul and I have a devotional for you this morning. I just spent a little bit of, a few moments in prayer that God would use me. I, I can't do anything without him. I need him this morning. Would you pray for me as, as I do these devotionals and whatever God calls me to do? I appreciate it very much. If you take your Bibles and turn to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, we're going to be reading from verse 26 to verse 31. God is looking for uh, people that are faithful, that are faithful to him, faithful to uh, services, faithful to soul winning, faithful to doing whatever God has called you to do. He wants you to be available uh, when you're needed and he wants you to be dependable. Uh, God wants us to be broken also, a, a broken vessel, something that he can use. My wife and I, we have this uh, spoon at home and it, we've had it for years. It's a, it's a big spoon with holes in it and we use it for vegetables. And, but it's got a handle that's broken off it. And we keep it in the, the drawer right, right by the uh, fridge. And whenever we open up that drawer, we can see that and we know that it's there and it's dependable regardless if it has a broken handle or not. We've used that spoon so many times, and I think about that, that God can use broken people. I'm a broken vessel before the Lord. First uh, Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, uh, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. And that's where we get our wisdom from, and righteousness and sanctification through Jesus Christ and redemption, redeemed by the blood of Christ, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Let's bow for a word of prayer. God, help us to glory in you today, not in ourselves. And Use each one of us, Lord. I pray, Lord, if there's one here watching by way of this program that doesn't know you as Savior, that they might turn to you and realize that their sin will send them to a Christless eternity, a place called hell, and that you died, you paid that price, that they might have eternal life. I pray, Lord, that you'd speak to those hearts today. Show them your love for them, Lord, that you love them so much. <clears throat> I pray you use me, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. A vessel for God. All the glory belongs to Jesus. When we think we are something special, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 1, a knowledge puffeth up, but charity, charity edifieth. You know, uh, I've been puffed up at times. You think, well, I studied this and I've studied that and I've done all this and, and I know this. And, and you think that you're, 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 you're nothing. This word puffeth up means to inflate, uh, to make proud, haughty, a uh, sense of blowing. I think of a balloon, that's what happens. We get our, our head blown up like a balloon while uh, the needle's gonna pop it. Uh, Galatians chapter six and verse three. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Uh, pride will bring us low. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12. Uh, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief 
in departing from the living God. Sin will take us away from God. Not, not reading this holy writ, that'll take us away from God. Not praying, that'll take us away from God. Not uh, fellowshipping with the saints, that will take us away from God. Not communing with God, that'll take us away from God. Only a sinner saved by grace. We've got nothing to glory, and I've got nothing to glory. And in Acts chapter 3, uh, Peter and, and John, they were entering the temple. Before that, uh, Peter preached, and there were uh, 3,000 souls saved. And now they're entering into uh, the temple, and they meet a beggar there. The beggar uh, is looking for some money and Paul says, silver and gold I have not, but of such things I have. And he said, rise and walk. And the man stood up and he's restored. He was made whole. That's all we are. We're a beggar uh, saved by grace. God uh, put new life into us. That dead spirit that was in us became alive. We were quickened by Christ. What we are in salvation. Uh, turn to chapter four of Acts. Chapter four of Acts. And we'll read a few verses there. <clears throat> Chapter 4 and uh, verse 1. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. Now, this, this is what <clears throat> the Lord is talking about, not many wise and of this world being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. Here uh, the Lord uses these men, and 5,000 are saved, and it came to pass on the moral that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas, the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have ye done this? And all Peter and John knew exactly who this is. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them, ye rulers of the people, elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole, this is the resurrected Christ. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only through Christ that any man gets into heaven. His shed blood on the cross paid the price for our sin, <clears throat> the only way into heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. <clears throat> John 14, 6, uh, verse 13 of Acts 4. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, the, the boldness was the Holy Spirit. Nothing that they said and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus and beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. They got into a little huddle, saying, what shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them and is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it but that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. You, you can't stop the gospel. They, they tried to stop the gospel. I mean, it's gone all around the world. 
and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak, we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard, the things that we have seen and the things we have heard. They spoke of Jesus. <clears throat> they glorified God and, con and confounded, the confounded recognized they had been with Jesus. Uh, God opens up doors for us. The gospel can't be stopped. I think of the other day I had to return a Bible to a member of our church and I didn't have the right address and I went to the wrong wrong door and knocked on that door and a lady came out and I was able to present her uh, with a gospel track and told her that Jesus loves her and that if she'd read that and trust Christ as her savior, she could have a home in heaven. I went through a bit of the plan of salvation with her. I wasn't going out knocking on doors, but God opened up a door that way and he can open up doors. He can make divine appointments for us. The priests, the captains, of the temple, the, the Sadducees, uh, Peter and John uh, both worked in partnership as fishermen. They had a fishing business. <clears throat> and, and you think of this verse here, not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. God can use whoever is willing to be used for him. <clears throat> you think of that prophet, uh, Jonah. Uh, maybe Jonah was a little bit proud, but was humbled by a fish. God used a fish to humble him. How much more base can that be than to be spewed out of a whale's mouth? Uh, Jonah, Jonah was then ready to go to Nineveh and to preach the gospel. He was stripped of his pride and he preached the gospel there that they had to repent and the king and the people repented of their sin. And God used Jonah in a great way. God is humbling his people today by giving the gospel to the despised Gentile nations, provoking them to jealousy. Every man must come to God humbly. Uh, turn to Matthew, Matthew chapter number 17. <clears throat> Matthew chapter number 17. We're going to be reading a few verses there. Uh, Matthew uh, chapter number 17, <clears throat> verse number 24, verse number 24. <clears throat> and when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, doth not your master pay tribute? Always trying to accuse Jesus. He saith, yea, yes. And when he had come into the house, Jesus prevented him saying, what thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom and tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, of strangers. Jesus saith unto him, then are the children free. Notwithstanding, he didn't have to pay, but he said, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea <clears throat> and cast the hook and take up the fish that first cometh up, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. Who else could do something like this but God? God is the only one. <clears throat> in the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and said un set him in the midst of them. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as a little child as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have to be humbled before holy God. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So there are degrees of lesser and greater in the kingdom of heaven. But that one that humbles themselves as a little child, 
They'll be the greatest in the kingdom. The, the, the humble person, Hebrews chapter four and verse 13, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto, him, unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. We have to do with Jesus today. <clears throat> he sees everything we're doing. The Lord just sent a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even a noise of a great host in the Old Testament to put to flight the army of the Syrians. They fled. They just heard a noise. They had Jerusalem surrounded. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, <coughs> king of Babylon, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. He had to be brought to a place where he was humble before God. All whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Allow God to use you. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. He that showed thee, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. God can use a bunch of dead, dry bones to bring to life. To glorify his name, he can use us. Let's bow for a word of prayer. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, that you can use us. And I pray, Lord, that you would use us. Fill us, your servants, with thy Holy Spirit, Lord. I need you today, Lord. Help me to be a witness to somebody today, Lord. Oh, God, help us, Lord, to live for you today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Have a great day.